This is the Maxpedition Pygmy Falcon 2. The overall dimensions of the bag are from top to bottom, 17 inches high, 8 inches across, and it's 9.5 inches in depth. It's made out of a thousand denier ballistic nylon with the Teflon protection coating to keep it clean. It's got YKK zips with the paracord pulls, and it's got Duraflex buckles. It comes in black, OD green, khaki, foliage green, and the new dark brown color. It's about 112 bucks on Maxpedition site. You can find it if you look really hard for around 85, 90 bucks. Um, I think I paid around 90 dollars for it. Okay, let's spin it around and take a look at it. So we got uh, some nice shoulder straps here. It's about a half inch of padding with some mesh on it for ventilation. And it's got a bunch of pals, molly, whatever you want to call it, all over the straps, all over the sides of the bag, all over the front of the bag. There's just attachments everywhere. It's got a stretchy chest strap. And then the back tube is padded, again, half inch with the mesh overlay on top. It does not have a frame sheet in this bag. Um, as well as it doesn't have a hip buckle either. Um, as you can see, it kind of barrels when you pack it, you know, way too much like I do with all my Maxpedition gear. Um, but you can add a frame sheet if you need to. We'll go over that a little bit later. You got your tough as nails carry handle here. On this side, again, there's some pals, molly, webbing, uh, holding on this bag. Um, I have a little night ice carabiner. Uh, bottle opener. This is the Maxpedition MM, uh, MM dump pouch. Uh, it was a great addition, very low profile, but it's added so much extra storage to this bag that I, it was just totally worth it. I mean, you can see it's, uh, it's supposed to be for uh, dumping AR-15 rounds as you're shooting and instead of throwing them on the ground or pistol mags or whatever, but you know, my Maxpedition fatty tool kit will slide right in here if I needed to. Um, my first aid kit, you know, which I have a pretty big one in my car. I only have a little boo-boo kit in this one. Um, you know, you can gather, you know, firewood with it or food or whatever you need. It's just extra space in this bag. Um, because the bag itself is listed on the Max Position site as being 1,100 cubic inches which is, comes out to like 18 liters, so it's a really small bag. So know that up front. Um, you know, figure out what it is that you're gonna use the bag for, and then determine the right size for you. This bag is perfect as a get home bag in my car. Not too big, not too small. It forces me to rethink what I really need. The organization in this bag is just amazing. Um, most of the stuff that's in this bag came out of a Gregory Jade 34 liter pack. Um, I had to re remove two of the MREs, you know, so I put little snacks in here now. Um, and then I got it down to a 28 liter pack. And with the exception, the only other item I removed was the, a part of the sleep system, which I'll show you later. Um, and I was able to get it down into this 18 liter pack, which still has some room to spare. Um, it's packed so tight though, I can't get a Nalgene bottle in the pocket here because the bag is just stuffed full. So instead what I decided to throw in there is my Gerber rock cut camp knife. Full tang, thick, excellent for batoning firewood. Plus I can take it out of there and put, I usually carry a um, stainless steel, a little bit narrower water bottle with me daily basis. So that'll slide in there if I need to. This can go right on my, on my belt to save some space and some weight. So we'll, we'll empty out all this gear and we'll show you everything that fits in here. Um, then on the other side, there is the another Max Edition pack. This is a anemone anem, anem, anemone pack. Uh, I think it's some kind of sea creature or something. Um, inside there, I just have a Streamlight uh, Stylus Pro, and I have a green keychain Sharpie. I have this little <laughs> wind-up extreme emergency flashlight. 
in case everything in my pack explodes and I have no other choice. And then way down in there, another little baggie of change in case you come across a vending machine. And then inside, I have some gun wipes. I have some ketodyne micro pure tablets. I have uh, 10 of them in there, enough for 10 liters of water. And then I have Smith pocket sharpening tool. And then this is a Smith's, Smith & Wesson's Extreme Ops Tanto. I think it's called a Tanto blade. Not real fond of the Tanto blades, but it was a $13 skeletonized knife from Amazon. Solid metal. Um, it was assembled well. It wasn't populated together or anything. Positive locking. So it was a great addition to the kit. And then this was a nice little item too. It came out of a first aid only kit. And it's a little window cling that you put up in your windshield. And it's bright yellow with black writing and it says call 911. So I thought that was really cool for this pack. And that's all that's in the uh, anemone pack. And the mesh water bottle pocket on this side. I just have a Princeton Tech fuel headlamp. There's no batteries in it for storage reasons. And then I have a Enright towel for hygiene. It's a pretty good size. Um, you can use it for you know whatever you want to. It was in it very inexpensive. It came in this nice little mesh pouch you could hook on. So if it's wet. Uh, and you don't want to pitch it, you want to keep it, it'll uh, drain out as you hang it on your pack and walk. Then on the shoulder straps, all I have is a jet scream whistle, and I have a, uh, a weight-bearing carabiner. It's a quick release. Um, I have a bolt one, too. It's on my bug-out bag. And that's it for the outside of the pack, with the exception of the front here. We have a couple of Blackhawk speed clips. Love these. Like them better than the tack ties. Just my opinion. Um, they're a little more rigid, a little more secure. Um, the bag's not flopping around. It's it's on there really nice and tight. Plus they're speed clips. They're really fast to get them on and off, which is a really cool feature. And then I picked up a Nightcore P12 flashlight that I'm testing out. 950 lumens so far. The beginning tests on it are just very impressive. Really like it. Um, but this is the little battery case or flashlight case that came with it. So I put that on the bag. And then underneath here, I'm going to leave it on here for now because it helps to keep the bag up. It's a large uh, rain jacket in its own little uh, carrying case. Um, a lot of people didn't like the shock cord idea you know, underneath the front section. They're like, oh, you should have made the bag longer. Or, um, I like it because it actually keeps the profile of the bag looking really small. I mean, it doesn't look so big and bulky. Um, someone suggested putting a Maxpedition Janus extension pocket under there, and they said it worked and fitted really well. Um, apparently, I again, I packed my Maxpedition gear way too tight. It did not fit in there the way I liked. Um, it ended up like tipping the bag back a little too far. It just didn't look right. It made the bag look big and bulky and I'm trying to avoid that. That's why I went with like the smaller type pouches on the outside. Um, so I actually like the shock cord area. The rain jacket fits perfectly in there. If you take your time, figure out the squish compensation of the weight of your bag on whatever you're putting there. You can roll up a tarp, you know, and put it underneath there. You can put many things under there, jackets, you know, tarps, uh, little mini blankets, you know, whatever you want. You just got to be a little more creative, um, you know, in your gear choices for that area. Okay, moving on under the Y strap, boom, 100 feet of paracord. Everybody knows the great use is a paracord. Okay, now on, on all the zips, I put these... S-beaners, 
just because they make it easier to grab and, and yank open the zippers so you can get into your gear real fast. Um, they work for me. So let's get into the bag, see what we got in here for my get home bag. The first pocket is the slip pocket on the front, it's full length of the bag, full width of the bag, and plus it goes a little up into the top here. And inside there, we have three chem lights, one yellow, two white, in case you need to see uh, actual colors. Oh, got poked open. Actually got a little utensil set here, a little cheapy throwaway thing from, you know, some dinner or something. Napkin, salt and pepper, work great, threw it in there. Also have a little backup. I have this mini GSI collapsible spork. Here's a cool item for when you're out trying to fix a flat tire on your car and you're trying desperately not to be squashed by somebody flying by it. 80 miles an hour. <laughs> um, it's an orange safety vest. Works great for this pack. So I threw that in there. Let's see, and then next we have in here a local area map, um, a compass, and it is a it's a silver compass. I like silver compasses. And then I just have a laminated laminated um, map of my state. Okay, and lastly in the front slip pocket, the jumbo zip ties. Multitude of uses, besides the obvious, um, fits perfectly into that sleeve pocket. Put that over there. So you can see in the sleeve pocket, it's a pretty good amount of little gear just for a little sleeve pocket. Okay, let's see what else we got. Okay, so now we're going to the middle section of the pack. And the first thing that comes out is three kind bars. They're like a uh, nuts and spices and um, little snack bars. They're a nice break from granola bars. I love granola bars, but that was something new I wanted to try, and they're very good. Then I got a pair of gloves I got picked up at Menards. High visibility. They're reflective. All the Gray areas are reflective. Um, they fit really well. Nice suede, nice elastic on the front, and adjustable at that wrist. Great for when you're changing a tire again. The more bright stuff you have on, the more chances somebody's going to see you and hopefully not run you over. Then to see inside this pack, I have a very inexpensive, I think it's a $3 Cree flashlight, like the one I'm using to show you things here. Um, it goes into a focus beam, goes into a flood, got your flashy high, low settings. It's great. It works out perfectly for this bag. Um, it sits on my little key fob there. I don't put my keys in the bag, so that works out well. Get down in here a little bit more. Wet wipes. Got to stay clean. Wet wipes is a great, great thing. All right, this is a, a, a cool little new gadget I got. I haven't reviewed this yet, but it runs about 20 bucks on eBay, and it's a solar charger. Um, this thing has even charged in the house through the Aloxac bag on my dining room table because I have a floodlight on my dining room table. Impressive. It comes in an accessory pack, so you can charge a wide variety of not only cell phones, but all your gadgets. Being a gadget girl, great item to have. I like to have several different ways of charging my stuff in, in case of an emergency. Um, just recently my car broke down and <laughs> I forgot my charger at home. And my phone had one bar left and lucky for me it was enough to call a tow truck. But I never wanted to be in that situation again so I make sure I have plenty of different ways to charge my phone in here now. A couple of Millennium Cherry Bars for when you're really, really desperate for food and you're stranded. Um, it'll keep you alive. And then the last thing in the little pocket there is a, a reel. And the reel goes with this telescopic 
I know what you're going to think. Gimmicky. I know. You know, I thought the same thing when I seen the advertisement for this. The little top telescopic fishing pole. But I got to tell you, I watched a lot of videos on it. And they were catching fish with it. I mean, and they were catching some pretty good sized fish with it. It works. I mean, it's better than using a, a tree limb. It's got all your little eyelets for your lines and stuff. You don't have to worry about, you know, coming up with little gadgets to put something together. It's already together. It's already to go. Very inexpensive. I mean, very. You can get these from China and, you know, pick them up for three bucks. So that was a, I thought it was a great little addition here. Now let's see if we can show you inside the bottom of this bag a bit. There you go. So you got a idea. I mean it runs full length. It's, you can fit a, fit a lot of stuff inside that little cavernous area there. Okay. Alright. Moving on. Got a Smith & Wesson it's hard to see. SWAT 2 knife. Uh, thick blade. Positive locking. Belt clip. Hefty. It's a, it's a, it's a beefy knife. Um, it's, it's a little bit better than the, the other little knife that was in here, but multiple light knives. I like having multiple knives in my, in my bag. And then to go with the, uh, the fishing kit, this is a little cheapy Wally World pill case. And I, I have in there some some gummy worms, some swivels, some sinkers. Uh, on this side I got a fly and a couple of treble hooks and, you know, just some different little fishing supplies in there. A nice small compact little little container to put them in. Okay, uh, and I got a pencil, sharpie, and a pen. My little admin pack up here. Tied to go. Everybody likes Tide to go. Uh, AAA batteries. Uh, my flashlights, my headlamp, they all run on AAA. Um, my, style, my Stylus Pro. A lot of my lighting stuff runs on these AAAs. Easy to get, easy to store, small, compact. These last for 10 years in storage, supposedly by Duracell. So you can throw them in the pack, you don't have to forget about them. You can forget about checking on them all the time. Um, great idea. And finally down here in this little slip pocket here, some cash, some change, again, for um, maybe find some little snack machines or something. Then this back slip pocket back here, which runs just to the end of the admin pouch here. It doesn't run full length, just to here. Um, got a Bright in the Rain notebook. Some potassium iodine tablets. Um, unfortunately, there's quite a few power plants around here, so better safe than sorry. Um, you know, they're inexpensive and it's worth it versus the risk. Think Chernobyl. <laughs> um, this is a neat little gadget I got, and I'm sure there's some reviews on this. Um, I, I might take a review on this later. It's a red laser pointer. Um, and you can use this for emergency signaling. I took it out in the yard, did a preliminary test on it, and you know, shot it, shot it up in a, you know, 30 foot tree about 200 feet away, and you could see it. Um, it's supposed to work really well on reflective signs, uh, street signs, anything reflective. Um, and I and I used it out in the yard, and you know, shined it on the reflective stickers on the electric box out there, and it was amazing how it lit that thing up, that little tiny beam. So we'll have to check that out later. Then we got the ever popular No Mess WD-40 pen. Multitude of uses for that. A uh, little variety pack of zip ties. Those always come in handy. And then all that's left in there is a little desiccant pack. Um, I actually want to get a couple more. Just to help suck the moisture out of this thing. Uh, you can keep everything good in there. So that's the middle part of the pack. Now we'll go right into the main feature of the bag. And I'll get this back in focus when I get it open. 
This is the clamshell opening. of the backpack and there you go okay see burn frame there okay all right let's dive right in a pair of wool socks keep your feet warm dry this is a little um a little bag uh, I came in a set of three I think this is custom leather craft bag and um, I keep my esbit stove in here I have probably about one, two, one, two three uh, fuel tabs, and then here's the stove. It's a stainless steel one version, and then inside here there's a whole bunch more of these little um, tablets and some cotton for fire starting. So these these bags are nice. You can actually pick up uh, a three pack like this under a different name brand over at uh, Home Depot. And they're actually a little bit uh, cheaper in price than these bags. Um, but they look exactly the same. Great little bag. Toe warmers. Love toe warmers. I work out really, really cold winter conditions. Those things have saved my toes I don't even know how many times. I uh, found these in a drawer. <laughs> Brand new. They were still in the box. I uh, don't know, remember where I got them from. Um, I don't know why I didn't put them in here. But I took out, let's get a little nice case and a little belt loop thing and, and shoved down in the bottom here there's a, a cleaning cloth. So I took out the cheapies that were in this pack. Uh, these are Vivitar PV Series 8x22. They, the whole thing just feels quality. The movements, the rubbery feel of the entire uh, binoculars. Um, the adjustments are, are nice. It's 367 feet at a thousand yards. So, you know, it'll work. It's got tinted lenses. They're really nice. Really nice little kit to be in here. It worked out perfectly for my car kit. And we got the ever popular N95 mask with the exhaust valve. This one costs a little bit more. It's a little better construction, a uh, lot more cushioning at the nose. The exhaust valve really makes a difference. If you've ever worn a dust mask for any period of time, they, they're very difficult to breathe through. It's not a comfortable experience. You know, but if, you know, you probably wouldn't care if you went through, you know, what happened in New York. Um, but I just figured it was worth paying a couple extra bucks to get a real quality mask. And thanks to Cody Lundin, here's your ultimate shelter. No, well, your ultimate shelter on the go. Something that you don't care if you have to leave it behind. A 9x12 plastic drop cloth. Use this in combination with your emergency survival blanket, the little foil things. You can get these things cooking with a fire. You can get nice and toasty warm in these things. Plus, like I said, if you're in a hurry, you got to go, you can just leave it behind. And no worries about expensive shelter. Here's the Maxpedition Janus pack we were talking about earlier to fit up where underneath the pack to hold it up, uh, where my rain jacket was. As you can see, um, and there's a review on this, you can check out what's inside. I'm using it as a toiletry kit. But it is like jam-packed. It's like a little mini Nerf football size and it just does not fit in there. So I threw it inside the bag. I'm still testing it out. And it's got the little shock cord on there for extra gear, but I think I might remove that if I decide to keep it. So that's that. Next item is my little Adventure Metal Kits Trauma Pack. This is my kit for in here. Um, it's got quick lot in it, and it's got, you know, a wide variety, triangle, bandages, 5.9. You know, there's, you can look online. It's, got a, it's a great kit. It's a great bleeding kit. So, like any kit, though, it's padded with my own stuff, my own medications, you know, anti-diarrheal, you know, Benadryl, headache medicine, you know, boo-boo band-aids, you know, for minor stuff. And it worked out great for in this pack. Perfect size. We chucked in another Millennium Bar and Orange one to break up the taste of those cherry ones. Some N95 cheapy masks. They're flat, so I threw them in there. They don't take up much space. Nice to have them in case you run into someone else who needs them. Uh, this was the only other item that I changed out of the bag. 
Um, this is the SOL Emergency Baby. Everybody's seen these things, they're great. Um, it's, it's good in a pinch, you know. Um, I swapped this out though because what was in here was the larger version, much larger version was the thermal uh, bivy. But I wanted a little more room in the back. So, you know, it's, that one would be better for winter, but this one will have to do along with the shelter and some other things that I have in here. Okay, moving on. My choice for temporary water until I get to a water location. I have a way to purify water to drink it. Um, this is just to get you there. You know, because you don't know where you're going to be stranded at. You know, you might have to hike it for a while. You might have to hoof it for a few hours before you get the water. It's nice. It lasts five years. It's like SOS approved water. You know, it's the 4.227 fluid ounce containers. There's six of them in here. Um, this one doesn't expire until 2018. I shrink wrap it. You know, they did pressure tests on these. And, you know, they're not supposed to puncture or get all over your bag. But just in case, I shrink wrapped them a little bit to give them a little extra protection for in the bag. <laughs> this is just an amazing little thing that I discovered on the web. A Maxpedition pocket reference guide. There's like everything under the sun in here. How to tie knots, math math um, problems, solutions. Um, there's glue, glue, solvents, paints, finishes. There's how to tie knots in here. There's information about the airlines, um, phone numbers, gate numbers, you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, steel metal here, tie knots, uh, surveying, mapping, weather, everything. There's construction stuff in here. There's calculations in here. Um, chemistry, physics, uh, wood, carpentry type stuff, automotive stuff. It's a great little pocket reference. You know, plus if you're stuck somewhere and you need something to keep your mind occupied, you know, I don't have my SOS, uh, SAS survival guide in here. I do have a little pocket version though but it's also on one of my backup phones. Um, this I just thought was really comprehensive and I wanted it on paperback. So we got that. The ever popular Eaton emergency radio. I have the original one, the, the little red one, the first generation um, that was in collaboration with the Red Cross. It's in my bug out bag. Amazing. That's the the older one with this. It's got the solar panel on though, but the solar panel is so outdated and it, it doesn't, you know, function really, really well. Um, but it's got the hand crank on it and it still works after all these years. And I haven't replaced the battery. And I've had it since they first came out with it. But I decided to upgrade for this bag. Um, I love gadgets. I love new technology. They improve this in my opinion. It's still got the hand crank, so that's great. But it's also USB so you can charge it, fully charge it before you leave for your adventure and it's ready to go. So you don't have to right off the bat worry about winding it up. Though you can use it to charge your cell phone as well, which I, again, another way to charge your cell phone, um, which is great. And it's got your, you know, weather stations and a little emergency flashlight. So, great. Okay, moving on. Here's my little, <laughs> my little multitude of stuff kit. So we'll pull some stuff out of here. First thing that comes flying out is a, another little mini compass paracord bracelet somebody gave me. So I threw that in there. For carrying or collecting or treating water, a platypus two liter bottle, collapsible, nice, convenient. Got that. Then, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly. I think it's Coglins. It could be Kuglins, uh, but I think it's Coglins. A uh, Sierra saw. Believe it or not, for very inexpensive stuff, you know, cheap plastic key, uh, kind of weird, kind of hook thing to keep it from closing on you. Um, but you know, at least it has an adjustable bolt in here, you know, that you can tighten or loosen. So it's got a little something. Um, it's the full size. It does work. It actually works very well. I have a few of these. I took one out in the yard and I mean I just used and abused and tortured this thing. Eventually I, I got too rough with it and I did, I did bend the blade. But it went through everything I threw at it and I love it. It's, it's great. So 
keeping that in the pack. I know other people like their Baco Laplanders and everything. I like to have a wide variety of gear in my bag. Some things I can't compromise on. They gotta be, you know, the best quality I can afford. Some other things, yeah, I, I like to try some really cheap and expensive gear to test them, to see, you know, what their durability is like. You know, and not everybody can afford super expensive gear. You know, you gotta get what you can afford. So I like to test out a nice wide variety of things. Um, here's a <laughs> cheap little $1 pencil case. And inside of it is my water purifying system for in this pack. I'm a K-9 girl. I have a K-9 Vario in my bug out bag. Love it. It's great. Never get rid of it. Might upgrade it to the Pro Series later, but this is the Sawyer Mini. Uh, just came out not too long ago. Runs about 20 bucks. I mean 20 bucks. That is just phenomenal. It's got the little backwash syringe. It comes with a little bag. You can buy extra bags. It comes with one though. And then it comes with a little straw. And then, you know, I put the, the instructions in here uh, in case someone needs to use it um, when I'm not around. It, it advertises that it filters up to 100,000 gallons. You know, I don't know if I buy that or would want to even push it that far. But, I mean, it's great. For 20 bucks, this thing is just amazing. It fits perfectly in this pack. And it, it was a great purchase. And I'm actually very happy with this purchase. Okay, so we got that. Then lastly, a little stainless steel cup. Uh, I actually upgraded this cup in my other pack and, and this got downgraded to my car pack because there's no graduations on the side. Um, so I have no I, I think it's probably standard uh, 16 ounces. Um, but there you go. So now I have a way to boil water or collect things or whatever in there. Alright, moving on. This is the Maxpedition M2 pouch. I bought the M1 pouch. It was just way too big and bulky and it looked really funky on the outside of the bag. For me, I myself, I didn't like it. Um, I try to keep the bag a little more neat, streamlined. Um, you know, I love Maxpedition gear. It's tough as nails and very hard to use gear as they advertise. But it's a little masculine. <laughs> Um, I love the durability though. That's why I keep buying this stuff because it's just durable as hell. You know, and it cleans up nice and it stays clean and looks new for just years. I mean, I've got a briefcase that I've had of theirs. I think it's the last resort for like five years. It looks like the day I bought it. So anyways, into the pack. We've got a bandana. Gotta have a bandana. And that's it for the little front pocket. I don't have anything in the little pen pockets right now. Again, some of these bags I'm just, I'm trying out to see how, how I like them and what I like to put in them and where I'm going to store them and stuff. And now we'll move into the inside. And here we have the ever popular repel. I get eaten alive by mosquitoes. It doesn't matter where I go, what time of the year it is. If there's mosquitoes out, they find me and they eat me. So these got to be in every one of my packs or on my person when I'm outside. So we got that. And then in the back section here. Ammunition and some earplugs. Earplugs, multitude of reasons. Um, there is no firearm in this bag. Um, a firearm does go in this bag, but it's not in here at the moment. This is my fire kit. A couple of Bic lighters, some tinder, wet fire. That stuff is amazing. Ultimate survival technologies, I think that is. One-handed striker in case you're injured. Candle, some storm matches, and my favorite when my lighter doesn't work, a magnesium bar. Those things are really cool. And uh, there's actually, there's a little striker. So there's my fire kit. <laughs> This was somebody gave it to me. Um, again, I thought it was a little gimmicky, but it's actually kind of a cool little tool. Um, it's actually quite expensive too for for what it is. But it's got a little ferrocium rod that doesn't stay on there anymore, so I had to tape it on there. It's got this little mini knife. Kind of looks similar to the Doug Ritter knife. It's got toothpick, 
tweezers, a whistle, a compass, and a magnifying glass. Like I said, somebody gave it to me, so I tossed it in there. And that is, oh, nope, one more thing in here. Oh, some additional Catadyne purification tablets. Guess you can never have too many of those. And that's everything that's in the M2 pack. Uh, before we get into that, see the summit clothesline. <laughs> um, I have no idea. I just I thought it would be good. I guess for actually, if you're in like a hiking situation and your clothes are wet, you had to go through a stream or something, and uh, you know if it's cold out, you don't want to get hypothermia or nothing. So you know, dry your clothes, hang whatever on it. It was just a neat little compact piece I put in the kit. Eagle Creek bag. Eagle Creek bag, what a handle. Dual zippers. Not YKK, but still pretty decent little di zippers. I love these. They're great for, car uh, you know, sorting your gear out, keeping things all together and little kits and stuff. I love that. It's great for organization. I love being organized. The only thing I don't like about these bags, and I wish the company would address it, because they have done so in other bags that they have, um, but they're a different style. The top lid, it's mesh. Dust gets in here, dirt gets in here, you can get water in here, moist, you know, I, that I don't like. I, um, I wish they would have put the little plastic film piece behind her, because it's nice with the mesh to, you know, other than this kit, to see what's inside. But I don't like not having that protection. Um, that's part of the reason for not only com compartmentalizing into a little bag, but also to give it extra protection. And this doesn't have any. But let's go through what's in this little bag. We have a large pack towel. Um, very comfortable, very soft on the skin. It's the large size. You can look them up online. There's, I'm sure Amazon and eBay sell them. But it's very soft. It's almost like a chamois or a chamois. Um, but probably more expensive. And it comes in a nice mesh bag that you can hang off again to let it drain while you're hiking through. So we have that. Then the next piece in here is the Gear Aid Explorer. Um, it's like a little repair kit. I'm not going to go in real great detail with it, but you know, there's some mesh screen in there for fixing tents and stuff. There's some tapes. Um, alcohol wipes, there's some buckles, there's some straps, there's some thread, some safety pins, some glue, um, just a, a wide variety of, you know, repair pieces. So that's a nice little kit I put in there. And then finally, and there's a review on this, you guys have seen this already, it's my little mess tin BCB survival kit I put together. Not going to go into that again, but... Again, another container to boil water or cook little fish in. Um, so there you go. That's what's in the Eagle Creek bag. Okay. We're getting toward the end here. So what we're going to do is spin the bag around to give you a look at the inside compartment here. And as you can see, there's a slip pocket here that runs... Uh, it's open, so there's a three mil trash bag behind here that runs the full length of the bag. And then behind that is a little loop here. That is for a hydration pack. Um, I checked into it, a couple people were wondering, you know, if that's what it's for or could you put a pack in here. Yes, it is for a hydration pack according to Max Tradition. Um, as you can see, and this was another one of the complaints on this bag for um, people who don't fill it completely and just have a few things in it, um, or people who overpack it like me and have things poking them in the back. There's no frame sheet, so it collapses. Um, you can put a frame sheet in here. You can get some little plastic and cut it and put it in there. Um, you can get some foam. Uh, if you don't want to pack it all the way to help keep this, you know, more rigid without adding a lot of weight to it. Also, 
Uh, oh, let's see what else we got in here. In the little slip pocket, we have a SOL, one to two person emergency blanket, which you could use in conjunction with the plastic to make the, the shelter we talked about. And then up in the zipper pocket, all I have is a couple of kitchen garbage bags for collecting, you know, whatever, odds and ends. Okay, so that takes care of the zipper compartment. Now, a couple of tips on this bag to help keep it upright, because once you take the raincoat out of there, again, it wants to collapse, especially if, like I said, if you're not going to pack it. Um, so get creative with what you're going to store underneath there. If you're going to get this bag with the shock cord, it'll help to stand the bag up and fill it out. Again, when you go and pack this bag, if you don't pack a lot into it, it's going to collapse here on the bottom and it's not going to want to stand up. So even if you pack this bag halfway, you want to get it to the bottom of the bag and you want to get it in this section here tight. You want a tight fitting there because that will support the bag and help keep it from collapsing. Um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> So that's the tips that I have on the bag. It, it doesn't come with a rain cover. Um, so, you know, either get yourself a, a poncho um, to cover you and the pack. Um, I have the garbage bag in there. Uh, in case it's really pouring rain, I can throw that in there. Um, I have other things in my car, you know, toolkits and extra clothing, blankets, uh, a rain suit, all that kind of stuff. Um, I didn't need to store everything in here because a lot of stuff I can just put on my person. So it saves room in my pack to put other things. So here's, here's a shot of uh, all the gear <laughs> that fit in this little, small, 1100 cubic inch pack. That's quite a bit of stuff, but it's actually piled on top of each other on the counter here. I didn't really put it up there real organized or anything. So. Again, the more creative you are, the more stuff you're going to get in your pack. This is the Maxpedition Pygmy Falcon 2 pack. With some a little additions on it. Those dolls don't come with the pack. None of the stuff that's trapped to the outside of the pack. But again, you can see when it's empty. It's a very small, low-profile pack. So, here's hoping you're enjoying great gadgets and gear too. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave any uh, questions or comments in the comment section. Um, thanks for watching.